All right, so hey, it's Video Bob. I'm here at the uh, Vegas Rocks Awards. Sands Town Live. Sally Steele, she's had this magazine, Vegas, for a long time. And uh, she does an award show, and she's invited some of our rock star friends to live here in Vegas. So uh, I'm kind of here as a guest. I'm sparkly. Sparkly. And uh, they were like, hey, Bob, would you, since you got like a following, would you be media? Would you be media for us? I'm like, I was just coming as a guest, but I'm going to cover it for him. So I'm going to put this on the channel, and we'll see, we'll see who we run into. We're going to run into some cool people. Let's get some of this scene here. I'm going to get a look at the lobby, see who's hanging out. People are dressing up. We've got a lot of uh, various folks. Various peoples. I'm gonna go over here to where this red carpet thing is. See who's hanging out. If there's anybody here. doing a great job. Welcome everybody to the rock and roll capital of the world, Las Vegas and City. Thank you for coming tonight. We have so many great people here tonight. It's my magazine's 20th anniversary and I wanted to do a kick-ass party and uh, I think I'm doing it. Uh, we've got some great people. I'm not going to remember to bring everybody. I can't mention everybody here tonight, but I've got, I'm going to start down at this end. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the great Kip Winger here tonight. Let's hear it for him. What a talent. Chuck Brennan's right there, my title sponsor. Take a bow and wave, Chuck. <laughs> Where's Mary? Oh, back there. We got Ricky Rocket, everybody. Poison. Oh, great. Oh, by the way, is Troy Patrick Farrell backstage? Can he come backstage? Can somebody get him back here? I can get him back here. And we have John Katz. John Katz, say hello. We've got the great Billy Gibbons right here. It's on your privilege of Billy Gibbons. And we've got Dax, and he is the son of the great Rick Nielsen of Cheap Trick. Thank you so much. Every time that you threw a pick, your guitar pick, out in the audience, I, one time you threw it, landed right on my lips. It's like, oh, I'd rather kiss him. Thank you so much, Rick. For, oh, no, I can't. <laughs> your aim wasn't as good then. <laughs> The man got the picks in his pocket. We have the great Buck Dharma here. Thank you so much for the Oyster Cult. It's about time they got awards. I mean, they, not even in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Oyster Cult. We got Eric Bloom here. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank you so much. We got Bruce Kulick, the best looking member of KISS when they took their makeup off. We got Phil, S Phil Susan. I almost said Phil Seymour. No, he's dead. <laughs> I've got, and uh, is Orianti? There's Orianti. Okay, sitting with Robert Sarzo. Thank you so much. And Blas Elias, so many great people. I know I forgot. I've got Frankie Marino out here. Thank you, Frankie, for coming. We've got Zoe Bowie. We've got Marie Sawchuck and everything. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, now, does anybody out here watch the, uh, the History Channel? Two or three people watch the History Channel. Okay. Well, you might know this uh, next band. And not only is uh, the lead singer uh, all over the History Channel with his famous show for many years, but he is in a band that is the Vegas Residents' amazing band. So I want you all to give a warm welcome, and I think they're back, they're ready. Please give it up for the rock band in Vegas. Count 77! <laughs> Oh, 
Double Count 77. Stoney Curtis, John Zito, Larry Barnes, Tommy Paris, Daniel Count Coker. Zito! All right, you tell me get a motherfucker. I'm sorry. No disrespect. That was, that was it's all about love. Growing up, being a blues fan and everything, I think I got that from a, I don't know if it came from a buddy guy. Well, you know, refer to your friends. These are my motherfuckers, man. You know, all good. That's what these guys are. I love you guys. And uh, thanks, Mike. Mike turned this little band into a beast. <laughs> Mike Varney, proud to call you our producer. Great to work with this man. And uh, call him my friend. All these guys, again. Mr. Curtis, <laughs> help me out here, bro. Uh, he ain't having no part of this now, is he? Um, I'm not gonna be up here all night like Dave Chappelle. Maybe I should, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, y'all motherfuckers have a great weekend, great night, and love you, God bless. Thank you guys, 13 years in the banking count 77, two original records, a third one on the way, a single on the way, a live one on the way. Mike Varney, you rock. Uh, just th thank you guys so very, very much. We love you all. Sally Steele, thank you, darling. We appreciate you. You guys rock. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And me and this young lady go back to the 1980s in Hollywood, right, Sally? She ain't looking at me. But, yeah, it goes way back to the 1980s in Hollywood. There was a magazine called uh, Music Connection. And, um... I hooked up, she had a band, great voice, great looking, a band of Warren D. Martini looking motherfuckers out there. And uh, it was cool. But anyway, we became friends and hung out, and then uh, again, getting back to my blues roots, I had to move out to Austin, Texas, because I love Johnny Winter, Stevie Ray, all that, ZZ Top. And um, anyway, we lost track, but we reconnected out here in Las Vegas so many years later. Well, only a couple of years later, right, young lady? All right. Love y'all, thanks. to introduce Bruce Cooley to you tonight. Bruce is being recognized for his contributions to the world of American rock and roll. He was born in Brooklyn a few years ago. 39 years to be exact. And 372 months. He grew up in a musical family under influence of his older brother, the great Bob Kulik. He started his first band in 74 and shortly after began touring professionally. It was not long before he was playing guitar with Meatloaf along his brother Bob, establishing the landmark of the Kulik brothers on the map. But it was the next period that would catapult Bruce to the forefront, playing guitar in Kiss. I mean, growing up on the East Coast, in America, and at that time, does it get any bigger than that? Bruce played on five studio albums and countless live recordings. In all, he was featured on 20 band releases. During his time, he never wore makeup. Unlike tonight. In fact, after Bruce left, Kiss had to start wearing makeup again. I like to think they had to make up for the departure of the good-looking guy in the band. Even after 12 years when he left KISS, he continued to work with his KISS alumni, appearing on projects with Paul, Gene, and Eric. He formed the band Union and co-wrote and played three albums which were released, rolling him over into the millennium. And in 2000, he started his longest spell with Grand Funk Railroad. And for the following 23 years, Bruce kicked ass or us, depending on where you come from, for virtually every weekend. Always remaining busy, Bruce also found time to write, record, and release three solo albums and to perform studio sessions. And in fact, 
Bruce has an impressive 60 album credits to his name. I had the pleasure of working together with Bruce at many fantasy camps. Often I was in the position of musical director, and the very first thing you notice about Bruce was his level of perfection. When you're doing something like that and trying to keep all these people focused, you quickly recognize dependable people, and Bruce was a pillar of strength that you could always be relied upon with confidence. He has integrity, he is professional, he is not afraid to lead, and while he's fun to be around, would always remain focused on the end game of delivering the goods. I'll tell you just a, a quick funny story. Uh, one time Bruce ended up with a kid group. So we always had one talented group of kids. They were talented pre-teens, some of whom were really quite remarkable. But they were still kids, they were goofing around, and it was always a bit of a straw pick, and this one time Bruce was the lucky guy to coach them. I remember seeing him trying to deal with the juvenile's distraction, trying to maintain focus. Bruce, as you can see, is rather tall. And that vision of him on a stage attempting to conduct and crack the whip with a bunch of excitable kids less than half of his height remains pasted in my memory. Those kids look not unlike the, the, the Munchkin's Lollipop Guild performance. Although Bruce didn't look quite as good as Dorothy. But seriously, he coached these kids to be as perfect as any band could have been. Three years ago he moved here to Las Vegas where he lives now with his beautiful wife, the lovely Lisa. He has just announced that he is leaving GFR so that he can be at home to work on new projects, spend time with friends, but always with music. It is my honor to present Bruce Kulick, the Las Vegas Rocks Guitar Legend Award. that song, right, Sal? Yeah, I wanted that song here. Thank you so much, Phil. Thank you so much. You went deep. I love that. And uh, I'm really honored to be here for this kind of event. I have many of my heroes here, too. It's just unbelievable to have, you know, just great music. Look, I grew up in Brooklyn watching the Beatles. I was so moved by that. And obviously, music was a big part of growing up. The British Invasion, Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, and went on and on. And the guitar was always nearby, okay. And the opportunity to play with people like Meatloaf and then to move into something like KISS for 12 years, I am so fucking blessed, okay? And, right? And of course, I worked hard. I always really paid attention. I really learned from everybody that I worked with. And it's really a case of just completely being dedicated to that instrument and the music, okay? Now, real quick thing before I finish, just I want to thank Sally, of course my beautiful wife Lisa for all the support. You gotta have a good woman in your life, it really helps. And other than that, I just think this is wonderful to bring everybody together here in Las Vegas for this evening. And I have to say, I love music, I love my guitar, and I love you all. Thank you so much, appreciate it. I told Sally that my uh, janitorial skills are top-notch, so when she invited me here, I did not expect to be up here. In front of all you guys, Mr. Ricky Rocket, how you doing? Chuck, good to see you, buddy. Thanks for the extension on the loan. Uh, all the way from Chicago, Rick Nielsen of Cheap Trick. And uh, we're also in church on a beautiful Sunday, and the, uh, the Reverend is in attendance there from ZZ Top. A lot of great drummers uh, here. And uh, we want to send a, a little love to uh, our fallen soldier, Mr. James Kotak. Yeah. There you go. It's good. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we're here to celebrate a lot of great people here. And uh, one of those people is Mr. Blas Elias. Yeah. Played with many bands, has great hair, <laughs> cool drummer, and a better human. And uh, really, that's what we're celebrating. Not only his talent and contributions to music, 
influencing us, our little drummers, all the way back in the day. But uh, he's good people, and uh, you guys are good people, and let's celebrate all the good people here, including Mr. Bloss Elias. Is he here, and is he coming up to receive this award? Kip Winger, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. All right. in the room tonight. So, I just wanted to say thanks to Sally, who's been a big supporter of rock and roll in this town, in LA. We first met in Los Angeles in the 80s. And uh, everyone, so obviously my, my first uh, introduction into this lifestyle was Slaughter, so I gotta acknowledge Slaughter. My wife, beautiful Lexi, for putting up with my weirdness. Um, so, but uh, I wanna thank Mark Slaughter, the original Vegas rock star. Dana Strong, and uh, the late, great Tim Kelly, who's not with us anymore. And uh, so, I, I kind of sometimes I feel like I'm not really worthy of being in the company of all these amazing musicians, some of the people that I grew up going to concerts with. I feel like sometimes I'm like Forrest Gump, and I just wind up in these weird positions with these amazing people around me, you know, so, but I've had a great run. Starting with Slaughter, we got to tour with, with Poison a couple times, with Ricky here. With our first tour was with Kiss, with Bruce Kulick, and, and uh, my good friend Eric Carr, who's now with us. Uh, we, we got to tour with you know, so many great people, Kiss, and Ozzy Osbourne, Dan Yankees, and Ted Nugent. Uh, and then uh, the Blue Man Group took me in. I did that for a decade and a half with a, another great, amazing bunch of artists and musicians that took me in for a while. And when I was ready to get back and play rock and roll, Harry Cowell from the Rating the Rock Fault show took me and gave me a new home. Uh, it's the longest running rock show in Las Vegas. Just won 10 years of the best of Las Vegas. So thank you, Harry, and the rest of the cast of Rating the Rock Fault. And I, oh, Winger, Winger was on that first tour. My buddy Kiff. Uh, and I just finished my sixth tour with the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. If you haven't seen it, you gotta see it. It's the most amazing spectacle of lights, pyro, and music, and musicianship. Chris Kelly, you were awesome. I love Five Finger Death Flex Rules. So, uh, come see us. I just found out we're playing Vegas for the first time in over 10 years this coming November. Come see us. Thank you, Sally. Thank you all. Uh, you all rock. Um, I dropped names, but it scuffed my boots. Lots of incredible musicians and bands and songs we, we know and love. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, a uh, bass player that's inspired uh, a million uh, a song and a million bass players. Um, very special human being and one of the best bass players I've ever met and know and I've ever heard. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the one and only Mr. Mark Mendoza. <laughs> That's all I want to say, wow. Thank you so much, you guys. I'm flattered, I'm humbled. There's so many things I want to talk about, but we got to move on. Uh, just being in the presence of all these cats, all this talent, so many years of inspiration, people that I looked up to, and later on, I got to play and work with them, get the phone call, I can't tell you how exciting my journey has been. It's been amazing, and I'm, I'm waiting for some more. So give me a call, you got a game, please give me a call. <laughs> but it's true, it is so true. Music is an infinitum, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. You can learn so much, you can express yourself, be creative, you grow. And I'm getting deep, but I gotta share this with you guys. The first time I heard, or I got an album, an LP, this is a little kid in Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, just south of the border. 
And I had a little uh, was Silvertone guitar, right? That we bought at a hawk shop for, I don't know, five bucks. My father got it for me. And for Christmas, we got Abbey Road. My brother was a dumb, the drummer. And I tell you, we wore that album out, down until it was gone, the needle. We had to buy 10, five, 15 needles to keep playing. And that was the inspiration. After that, of course, you delve yourself into the other stuff. But what a, what a journey, man, and in front of these cats, Kip. Wow, my love and respect, I mean it, bro. All you guys, Ricky, the same names, yeah. All, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving me the opportunity to talk to you, to play music, to lending your ears, lending your eyes and your spirit. And I'm doing a solo project. I appreciate the support. MarcoMendoza.com, if you can, I appreciate it. Love you all. A lot of respect. We'll see you soon. Viva the rock. Rock is forever. Thank you. I moved here eight years ago, and I have a ton of friends out there. Thank you all for coming. It's an amazing event. Thank you for Sally for doing this. I love this city. I love being here. Uh, give me three, well, maybe 30 seconds to fanboy. Billy Gibbons, Gilly, Dax. Rick, Eric, Buck. If it wasn't for you guys, what I do at Metal Blade Records and all of our bands, starting with Metallic and Slayer, we probably wouldn't exist, so. Anyway, uh, not about me tonight. But, uh, so I've known this next guy for more than half of my life. It's scary, because I'm old. Uh, but, uh, you know, he started out very early in the early 80s and was a guy that did these amazing production shows, even with no money. Like, when we started out, none of us had any money. And he would do these amazing shows with all this spectacular theatrics and all sorts of crazy stuff on stage. And I always wondered, like, how are you doing it with no money? But they just found a prop to do something. Clearly influenced by, you know, guys like Alice Cooper and all of the aforementioned legends in the front row here and a lot of other people here as well. But uh, had an amazing career. I'm happy to say that he's been on our label Metal Blade for his entire career, which I'm very thankful and honored to have him be here. He's still doing amazing music, amazing stuff today. He's still touring the world. He's playing festivals. He's doing all sorts of other stuff. Super happy to give my friend a phenomenal award, shock rock icon, Lizzie Borden. How's everybody doing? Yeah! 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 All right. I want to thank Brian Slegel for being my friend all these years and letting me do everything I want to do. I want to thank Metal Blade Records uh, for backing me every time I bring them a crazy album. And I want to thank my brother Joey Scott for being there from day one and uh, amazing drummer. And uh, this is the Shock Rock Award, and I know Sally wanted me to come up and spit blood everywhere, but I don't think Billy would like that. <laughs> so, uh, but I did want to talk about the people who influenced me. David Bowie, Elton John, the original Alice Cooper band, Fee Waybell, The Tubes, and uh, me and my brother walked into the, the first concert we ever went to, our favorite band, and when we walked out, we knew what we wanted to do, and that was KISS. So uh, I kind of lived my life with that old Groucho Marx joke. Uh, I would never join a club that would have me for a member. But tonight I make an exception. But thank you, uh, Sally, and thank you, Vegas Rocks, and uh, thank you, Las Vegas! Having a good time? Yeah. 
happy, hope you're having a great, happy new year, a new year. Um, this next award we're going to present is a man that uh, I met back years ago um, when I was singing with the band Bonham, and we were on tour, and he sang with a man that became my mentor, Mr. Ronnie James Dio. So, so and uh, he's a great guy, he also played with ACDC, and you know, have a pint with him and talk English football, and you'll always have a whole lot of fun. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Simon Wright! at the bar. Sally, thank you for everybody who uh, organized and uh, worked hard to get this show on the road and everybody. And thanks for, uh, thank you for this and everybody have a great night. Thanks very much. I don't want to say the most talented in Vegas, but I think he's right up there with one of the most talented because this man, he can play piano upside down, do Jerry Lewis, he can do ballads. He is such an amazing performer, and that's why we're here honoring him tonight. And I am so very proud to welcome, please everybody give a big hand for Frankie Marino! Just letting you know that. Just uh... Train around. Sixteen torches long. My name is John Katzlamidis. I write on the Las Vegas Review Journal on page 3A every day and online all the time. Um, first off, I want to recognize a rock star who doesn't play an instrument necessarily, but yet and he hasn't been introduced. That's Mark Davis, the owner of the Las Vegas Raiders down Woo! here. Right here, brother. Next time, bring your Moroccans, all right? Um, I asked, thanks, Sally, for having me up here and for doing this show again. It's been a few years since we've had the, the um, Rock Magazine Music Awards. Um, and I asked to do this. I'm not gonna make any, uh, no misconception about this. I asked to inter introduce Frankie and present him with, with, with this award because it means that much to me. Our, our careers have gone parallel in Las Vegas. About 20 years ago, when I was working at the Las Vegas Sun and Greenspun Media Group, Las Vegas Weekly, I started hearing the name of um, Frankie Marino around our office, and he was in our listings, and people started asking me in our office, I said, what's this, do you know uh, Frankie Marino? I said, of course, you know, he's the star of Evening at La Cage at the Riviera. <laughs> <laughs> so I went one night, I went down to Rush Lounge at the Golden Nugget, to see what this fuss was all about with this man. And um, I'll tell you, I started hanging out at Rush Lounge a lot because of Frankie. And one night I met a guy who would become a very good friend of mine. I know he's a, a big friend of yours too. 
Vinnie Paul. And Vinnie and I, through Frankie, became good friends. I never planned a night with Vinnie ever, but I saw him like four times a week. That's the kind of friendship we had. We bonded over Frankie, and that shows the, the reach of Frankie's music. He, he touched a lot of people. In fact, last time I saw Vinnie, I was sitting next to him at a ZZ Top show at, at the Venetian, also coincidentally. Uh, we've been all over the world, Frankie and I. If you know the story, we, we've been on songwriting adventures and writing adventures, and uh, it's, it was just, uh, it's been a hell of a ride, a hell of a ride. But I'll tell you about the first column that I wrote um, when I was at the Las Vegas Sun. It was in February of 2009, and my, the people around me were wondering, you know, what I was going to do with all this stuff I'd accumulated, all these stories. And so I went to the Rush Lounge one night, and I was sitting there, and members of the Las Vegas Philharmonic showed up in their blacks with music stands. A lot of them. Joshua Bell walked in, the violin virtuoso, carrying a $4 million Stradivarius probably the greatest American classical musician today. He walks in, and I looked at him, and I go, what are you doing here? And he goes, I'm recording Eleanor Rigby with Frankie. I go, okay. The whole, t it seemed like the whole town showed up. Every musician in the city got word that this gig was going on, and this place was on fire. The next day I wrote that up. That was the first Cats Report column in 2009. And we've had a hell of a ride ever since. There's nobody more prolific. I've never seen anybody better winning over a crowd, and I'm talking about from a, a bar in Vienna to uh, Hollywood Bowl to Carnegie Hall. Yeah. And um, a very inventive songwriter. One time we were in, at the uh, Eiffel Tower in Paris, and it was raining that day, and he started writing a song based on what was happening in our group. Somebody was having a bad moment by the end of dinner that night, he had a fully realized song. It's called Cry Baby. It was un unbelievable. So I'm here to, to congratulate Frankie as an example of the, the great artistry that can come out of this city, not just from him, but from many others, and, for, and to thank him also for his friendship over the years. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Frankie Moreno. I'm, first of all, I'm sorry about that guitar playing. I'm sitting in front of like the best fucking guitar players in the world. and I just got back on tour from um, Europe and I had a little laryngitis and the song she wanted me to sing, I didn't do because I couldn't sing it. The last one we just did, you know. But, uh, so I thought I'd start with something else, but I'm a piano player, so sorry about that. Um, like John said, uh, Vinnie, Vinnie Paul, uh, first time I came to this thing, uh, I got invited to come as a guest as Vinny's and uh, got to watch him perform up here. And um, a lot of a lot of the guys that are here tonight were also there and jammed with him. And, um, he became a good friend of mine. And it, uh, you know, we play very different styles of music, but he uh, introduced me to uh, his heavy rock, you know. And uh, I absolutely love it. And um, you know, I'm a piano player, but it doesn't mean I still can't. Fucking rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, thanks, Sally, for having me out here. Thanks, John, for uh, being here the whole time and helping me get where some of these people know me. And uh, God, I used to play Tush like every single night in the bar. I'd play that song, and he's sitting right there looking at me, and I'm holding the guitar. And like, I said to Christian right before I went on, I said, What do these knobs do? <laughs> But uh, anyway, thank you all very much, and uh, long live rock and roll, and uh, God bless you. And then I learned that that was this next great performer, and then all of a sudden she's in Alice Cooper's band, and Prince keeps calling to have her in his band, everybody's fighting over her, and she's just all in demand. Then Richie Sambora steals her from Alice Cooper, goes on and on. And I am so privileged as a rock singer myself for, I hate to say it, 30 years? <laughs> it makes me seem old. But I was out in LA working hard being a rock star in the female industry. And it's a rough business, as you know. You know, yeah, girl power. 
And uh, I am so proud to have this amazing, amazing woman with us tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Orianti! How you guys doing tonight? This is quite the award to receive. You know, I found like music is the most powerful form of magic ever. And I've been under the spiral since I was like six years old in Australia. And uh, so inspired by so many amazing guitar players who are here tonight. Billy Gibbons, who I opened up for when I was like 16 years old. Billy and Rick Nielsen over there. And um, this is amazing. So thank you so much, Sally, for keeping rock alive in Vegas. And uh... I know, I was already here. You're right. I was on my way to the bar with the boys, and I was pulled back. And they said, no, your work's not done yet, OK? OK. No rest for the wicked, as they say. How are we doing, all right? Having a good time? Yeah. All right, so this next award goes to a fellow vocalist. And I first met, I guess it was 2010, when I was singing with the band Lynch Mob. And he had a club, a restaurant in Akron, Ohio. And that was the first time I met him. We got any Judas Priest fans out here? Come on! was the first time. And then, uh, you know, with Wendy Dio and the Dio organization, I got to know him even more. He's a great metal vocalist, a great human being, great guy, sings his bloody ass off. Let's hear it for Tim Ripper Owens! <laughs> Do I get an award or would I just... Listen, I, I gotta say, it's pretty amazing for me to be here, you know, I'm still just... I was just a kid from Akron, Ohio, I'm 56, and I was a kid from Akron, Ohio that loved Judas Priest. Loved Judas Priest. And uh, one day I get a call to become the lead singer of Judas Priest, so I never would have thought that would happen. And I'm still the kid that I get to look out here and see all these musicians and all these people that I grew up loving. The best part of my job isn't touring the world doing it, it's hanging out with all these people. I'm so grateful to do this. I have a great family, great friends, great bandmates, so thanks to Judas Priest for, uh, for getting me this start. And thank everybody, thanks Sally, everybody here, thank you. And listen, keep rocking. I love rock, I love hard rock, I love heavy metal, I love music, all music, so thanks to music for putting me up here, thank you. fucking thing I've ever been a part of. <laughs> this dude backstage, I said, hey, I'm Craig Gass. I'm, I'm a comedian. I'm here to do the Five Finger Death Punch. He's fucking talking to me thinking that I'm in Five Finger Death Punch. <laughs> There's fucking people touching the curtain trying to figure out how to get here. You can hear Sally on the microphone going, where's Troy? Where's Troy? This is what, you know, it should be, it should be, Sam Kinison would have been the best host for this. <laughs> so when things are going crazy, just hearing Sam in the back going, hey, where the fuck is Troy? Somebody get me Troy! Oh! I want to give a shout out to James Kotek, who just passed away. Where the fuck is Troy? <laughs> So, my name is Craig Gass, I'm a stand-up comedian, you might need to Google that. <clears throat> they wanted somebody famous in this spot, but... They actually wanted, uh, the original person that was going to present this award was going to be Gene Simmons from KISS. And I have his speech. <laughs> Hi everybody, this is Gene Simmons. From 
kiss. And I'm here to present an award to one of the greatest rock bands that ever lived. And if you want to hear the speech, it's available for $49.95 at kissonline.com. Click on my codpiece. A lot of great music has come out of Las Vegas. I am proud to be a resident of Las Vegas. I'm actually performing at Jimmy Kimmel's this weekend. But along comes Five Finger Death Punch, changing the scene. My God, if listening to Five Finger Death Punch doesn't make you want to run out your front door and punch somebody right in the face, you are not alive. Ladies and gentlemen, Five Finger Death Punch. WWE stuff, get up here and, uh, and get on that mic. So thank you guys very much. We are Five Finger Death Punch. I'm Craig Gas, comedian. <laughs> Chris Kale, bass player. Zoltan Bathory, guitarist. Mr. Andy James. The other guys couldn't be here. They heard uh, the amount of the paycheck and, uh, and said that they weren't coming. So uh, we took that in their honor tonight. Uh, but seriously, we love Las Vegas. Just looking around at this room, just take a moment and think about the amount of talent that is in this room right now tonight. So kudos to Sally for getting the number of people in this room tonight. Incredible. Thank you. And we love heavy metal. We love rock and roll. And tonight, as with every other day, we love Las Vegas. We are proud to be Las Vegas residents, especially now that we have the likes of Craig Gass here as well. Jimmy Kimmel Club this coming Friday. But thank you so much. Uh, best metal band. Best metal band. And just want to thank everybody for being out here. The, the legends that are in the room. Mr. Kip Winger, my very first concert that I ever went to was Cinderella Winger and Bullet Boys. Yes. Yes. In Kentucky. All of us have come from all over the world. Hungry. Hungary. Yeah. Mr. Zolte came. Oh, he probably is hungry too. Andy James from England. Myself from Kentucky. We are proud to call us Las Vegans. We love this city. We love each and every single one of you. We love heavy metal. And thank you very much. Thank you, Sally Steele. All you guys, so many great friends in this room. We are honored. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so thank you very much. We love you. Thank you. Hey, I want to give it up for Jason Walker, my house band tonight. And the, Jason Walker, the Majestic 12. Isn't he amazing? Thank you, guys. Evan, Jason. And I, what's the drummer's name? Michael Mason. There, give it up. Thank you. Well, we had a, a, someone that is in L.A. tonight, so I am going to give this next award with great pleasure. I lived, I lived the scene in the 80s, and uh, I was always into, like, Poison and Guns N' Roses or Motley Crue, and they were my fave, fave favorites. And uh, I was always like, uh, you know, uh, I, I want to marry Ricky Rock, and I want to meet Ricky Rock someday, you know. But, uh, you know, that... that it's just another story, but I began to see him here and there and do interviewing for my magazine and it was such a pleasure. And I, I just gotta ask, are there any Poison fans out here tonight? I mean, this man, you know, there's, there's the crew.
critics will always say, oh, these guys wear makeup and they're just pretty boys, but these guys are hard driving rock and roll and they look good at doing it, just like they did in Allegiant Stadium on tour with Motley Crue and Def Leppard. And it is my great pleasure to welcome my fave in Poison. Please give it up for outstanding career achievement in music. Ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Rocket! Come on, let's hear it for him! Um, I didn't prepare anything. My manager said, hey, did you prepare anything? I said, no. Um, so I didn't. <laughs> so I just, I'm just going to shoot from the hip. Uh, Sally's been after me for a while to, I know, no, I mean, to, I come, and, to come to this show. Yeah. And something has always gotten in the way for one reason or another. And so this year I had no excuse. I was like, absolutely. And she said, well, you shouldn't have an excuse because I'm giving you a friggin' award. You idiot. And I'm like, okay. But you know, never in a million years when I was 11, standing, sitting on a picnic table with my little band called the GTOs with my friend Lee Kramer, that I ever th thought that I'd like be included among this group of people. And I mean each and every one of you, not just the big stars, but all of you, because you're all very accomplished. But, and then it really took Bobby Dahl and Brett Michaels for us to come together in Pennsylvania and find a way out west here and finally met C.C. DeVille, who was from back there, um, and, and put together this amazing band. And I've been doing that. I've literally grown up in this band. Um, I was only 22 years old when I moved out west here. Uh, Brett was 21, Bobby was 20. and. Uh, and literally, uh, so many of the things that I've learned in my life was what I like to call night school. And that was, you know, just through clubs and all those late nights of, you know, learning how to live in a rock and roll band. So it's all I've known for a really, really, really long time. And um, this is pretty cool. This just gives me, uh, you know, a little bit of cred, and I appreciate that. But I just have to tell this one story because I told it last night because I actually had dinner last night with the guys in Blue Oyster Cult. Okay, I can love these guys, man. All right, I put, thank you for being so nice because I was—if you would have been assholes, it would have broke my heart. Um, <laughs> so when I was in high school, I had a 1953 Chevy sedan delivery truck. And uh, it was great for moving drums around. And uh, the we senior skip day came on. I don't know if you have that out here, but we had senior skip day, and there was this girl I had a crush on. And I'm like, hey, do you want to skip school with me? <laughs> and so I think there was like four of us that all jumped in the car, and we took off at like 9 in the morning and just wanted to go smoke pot or whatever. She's going through my cassettes, and she goes, will you please play this one? I just love these guys. They're so evil. And it was boys to call, and I said, hell yeah, I will. So that was kind of my little anecdote there. But anyway, Sally, thank you so much, and uh, thanks for having me at this, and uh, I appreciate it very much. Have a wonderful evening. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's great to see everybody here. You know, you all used to look so good. It's uh, awesome. You know, and it reminds me, you know, it's when we're younger and we're playing music, we're angry because we're going to go up against the, the system, the man. You know, we're angry young men. And now when we get on stage, we're angry because our backs hurt. So it's a little bit different. And it's great to see Billy Gibbons here. You know, I used to think if you turned his head upside down, he looked like a frightened Ewok. You know what I mean? It was... But uh, anyway, so I got... Uh, I got something I want to say about Kip. I met Kip in the 80s, a scant 50 years ago. And half a century is not scant anyway, but 
I thought he was crazy. I remember I met him. I weighed like 230 pounds at that time. And he put his hand out, and when he shook my hand, he yanked me towards him. And I said, this guy's out of his fucking mind. And I liked that. And Alice liked it too. He was, he was there to uh, play on Alice's record. And we soon learned that uh, Kip is also crazy talented. And I watched his career skyrocket with numerous hits, platinum sales, and he was positioned to start headlining big venues. And then his career took a hit. Tragedy struck and everything fell apart. And I remember a few years later, I called Kip to find out what's up. He said he was playing at a Borders coffee shop for like eight people. And I, I, at that point, I got more respect for him than I ever had because it just showed that music was his life. It didn't matter if it was eight people or 50,000 people. He, that's what he did. So I, I really thought it was good because he defines himself and it really proved that through suffering sometimes comes salvation. So and before long, he was playing with his band again and lo and behold, I can't believe I wrote lo and behold. What the fuck is this? <laughs> it's like, like Socrates, you know, it's like, what the fuck? He, he gets a Grammy nomination for the best classical composition. And all I thought was, how the fuck did you do that? I mean, that, that is like, that's impossible, you know, if you try to add up a formula of what makes somebody special, you know? So sex, so, so, uh, sex, no, that's not what I'm gonna say. So success, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. And I think that's, that applies to everybody in life. Sometimes you meet brilliant, talented people, kind of like me, meeting all of you people tonight. I see people here, of course, you know, I just, I, I bow before their altar, you know, Billy and, and Rick and all the people here. I can't remember anybody. I can't even remember why I'm here, which is interesting. So, um, but every once in a while, sometimes they become friends. And that might be the most important thing. So, Kip, I'm so jazzed to present you with this Lifetime Achievement Award. Your musical lifetime is far from over. Come on. Kane Roberts. Yeah. Listen, you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't even know who I am without Kane. Kane was the one who, uh, when I got the call to do Alice Cooper, he pulled me aside and said, hey man, tell Alice you'll, you'll tour if, if, uh, if we need you. And I did and, you know, it all, it all went from there. And I learned a lot from Kane and we've been best, best buddies for 50 fucking years or however long it's been. So. It's a very honor, it's a great honor to be here among all the talent and especially the fans out there, you know, thank you very much for supporting live events and supporting live music and continuing to support new music. Um, we really appreciate that. The shows seem to be drawing more people. People are showing up to the shows these days and that's uh, really meaningful. Um, I've had some really high highs and some really low lows. And, um, and the thing is, man, is, is I was always putting my head down just work, focusing on the music, like Orianti said it, that, that music is a miracle. And so I'm always trying to figure out what the fuck to do with these 12 notes, you know, make them this way or that. And I kind of ended up in the orchestral thing because it's just what I started hearing and I started trying to learn how to how to do that. So I've been very blessed and very lucky to have a lot of um, incredible opportunities. Last September I was on the bill with Stravinsky. I mean, go figure. You know. But um, I'm a rocker at heart. I grew up with my two brothers playing all the ZZ Top, all the Cheap Trick, all the stuff. And I got to tour with Poison, Bon Jovi, all the biggest, with Kiss for Bruce. I was on tour with Bruce and Kiss. And uh, I really, uh, I'm a, I'm, I am living proof that if you have a vision, do you guys into Arnold Schwarzenegger? Yeah. Buy his new book, it's fucking amazing. If you have a vision, 
I'm living proof that if you have a vision, you just keep going, man. Uh, anything's possible. So um, I'm very humbled by this, and thank you very much to Sally for keeping this alive. Sally, thank you so much for having me here. And uh, everybody else that was behind putting this together, all the musicians, and uh, it's awesome. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Catan. It's an honor to be here. You know, don't blow this for us, Gene! Thank you. Um, but it is an honor to be here, and to be part of this night, is a, 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 it is an honor. And to introduce these next members uh, of an infamous band that has been, should have been celebrated in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame many a times, and it's not been, and that's a shame, uh, 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 yeah, uh, and, uh, <laughs> just checking my pulse, um, but, uh, you know, yes, we do, I just want to let you know, don't fear the Reaper, the Reaper is your friend, he's been my friend for years, we've been Instagramming each other and DMing, he's come over for a couple noodles, we've had a good time, so don't fear him, all right? But in the meantime, it is an honor and an absolute privilege to introduce to the stage the legendary Eric, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Buck Dharma and Eric Bloom. Thanks, Sally, and everybody associated with this uh, this award for it. I'll, I'll just do a couple you things rock. that Eric's saying. I, uh, I'd like to thank uh, my dad, who got me into music uh, when I was a kid. He's been a weekend sax player his entire life, so he passed away. Uh, I'd like to thank the Ventures. I'd like to thank the Safaris. I'd like to thank the Beatles for playing on Ed Sullivan in February of 64. Uh, all this, uh, you know, brought me to to this this point in my life. You know, and uh, the original members of BOC, uh, Sandy Perlman, without their uh, without whom there would not be a BOC. And, uh, let me thank my wife Sandy, who's uh, not only put up with me but has supported me and, and contributed to uh, my success and. And uh, the original bandmates in BOC, and of course my bandmate Eric Bloom, who's standing beside me. And uh, I just want to say I'm really grateful to uh, have had a career as a recording artist and touring musician for five plus decades. And uh, it's been a great run, and it's still still happening. And I thank uh, everyone for that. Yeah, Buck and I met in a music store in 1968, and uh, I can say we've been working together ever since then, and uh, we've never had an argument, except maybe over uh, what key a song should be in or something like that. And um, so I would like to thank uh, Sally for putting this amazing uh, event on. I'd like to thank this band for learning every freaking song they just played. Not easy. Chris Catan, amazing. Thank you for coming to this uh, amazing yeah. event. I'd like to thank my wife who didn't come tonight and uh, for putting up with me all these years. Not easy, but she knew what she was getting into 
when she met me in 1973. And thanks to uh, all the fans who came, uh, BOC fans or not. And also, um, thanks to Sandy Perlman, also who put us together way back when. He's not with us anymore. And uh, we all remember Alan Lanier, no longer with us. Thank you, everybody. Hello, everyone. My name is Dax Nielsen, and uh, for the last 14 years, I've been the drummer for Cheap Trick. Not a bad little outfit to be a part of. Um, they're a bunch of old guys, and I'm getting there myself, but uh, I've learned so many great lessons, and I've toured with every band out here, thankfully, because of playing... Hold on a second, I'm talking. <laughs> My father is very impatient, so... He's gonna walk up and say, any questions? And then he's gonna... Sorry, I gave up a speech. Um, anyways, uh, 14 years been in Cheap Trick, but more importantly, for 43 years, I've been Rick Nielsen's son. So, without further ado, there's a reason I'm a drummer, not a speaker. Rick, Richard Allen Nielsen. You've heard enough talking tonight, so I'm not going to do any more, but here's one rule of the road. Yes! I'm an only child, so I'm used to playing with myself. And, uh, but now I have 12 grandchildren and a bunch of other stuff. Thank you, Sally, and thank you to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for charging so much for me to get in that I couldn't bring all my grandkids. Thank you. Bye. Chris Angel! Yeah. What's up, Las Vegas? How we doing tonight? We having fun? Oh, you sound like you're really tired. I said, we having a good time tonight! I just got done doing a show over at Planet Hollywood called Mind Freak, and, uh, I was asked to come here and honor a gentleman who really is such an incredible talent that I had to say yes. I rushed my show to be here to do this because I've known this guy. He's actually uh, somebody that participated on uh, a couple of episodes of Mind Freak. Um, and it, it, it was great fun and he's a magic enthusiast as well. He always carries a deck of cards with him. People don't know that. So I had the pleasure of spending some time with him and obviously spent a lot of time with his music because his music is unparalleled, you know? It started in Houston, Texas. Yeah! Uh, 1969, him and Dusty formed a band. I don't know if you ever heard of this band. It was called ZZ Top! Yeah! Man, you talk about hit after hit after hit. This guy is a hit machine and just a wonderfully talented man but even a nicer person with all this incredible success so I am honored to present right now Vegas Rocks Lifetime Achievement Award in Music to none other the man the legend the myth he's here give it up for Billy Gimme! Good time now. Yes, here we are in uh, Las Vegas, a great gathering. How about a big round of applause for all of the great entertainers and some of the great entertainment that's being presented tonight. Big time. And uh, I'm here with my, uh, the love of my life, Miss Gilligan is here. 
you see me around town and they say, yeah, who's the good looking girl? Oh, that's Billy and Gilly. Yeah, that's great. Uh, gosh, I, uh, I was so excited. Uh, this is a non-performing day. We were gonna sleep in late. And uh, I got the elbow. I think it was, Gilly said, hey, you gotta get up, you gotta get up. There's something weird going on in our swimming pool. There's a bunch of dots. I said, what? She goes, a bunch of dots in the swimming pool. I said, it's raining. <laughs> in Las Vegas? But this, it's, it's, it's the novelty that we enjoy of Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. Nevada. <laughs> yes. And, uh, uh, she, you, you know, uh, um, this is, <laughs> that's, that's why we love you, <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is really uh, such an honor. When I say novelty, you know, the, the, the city changes quite often. There is a novelty about being in Las Vegas. It's always changing, but one thing you can count on, uh, read John Katz. Uh, stay in touch with uh, Sally Steele. You will always know what's going on in the good side of this great, great town. Thank you so much. Stand up if you want now. Everybody stand up, let's have some fun. We're gonna do a song that got me into Judas Priest as the young kid from Akron, Ohio. Breaking the law!
Just I'm Rick Nielsen from Team Trick. We're too dumb to quit, so we'll be around. Yeah. Hey, guys, if you got a minute, I want to thank all my sponsors tonight. Chet Brennan from Dollar Loan Center, who made this possible for being my title sponsor. And if you guys are standing that want to come up front for this last encore, everybody come up front and stand up because this is going to be a great finale. You'll never see this again here in person. Fill it in. And also, um, I want to get... Robert Sarzo is my uh, music director. He, he didn't know he's getting an award. This is for you, baby. Thanks, Alton. Well, thank you, Sally. Thank you very much. Uh, she says, keep it short. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you very much. The world of rock and roll rocks. Okay, you guys ready for the finale here? Where's uh, Peter and Stacy Blades? Crashing wayward. You're supposed to come up here. Are you guys ready to do this shit? Whoop. Are you ready?
motherfuckers. We're all all right. Yeah. all my sponsors that are listed up there and and thank you to all my staff that did such an amazing job okay yeah <laughs> thank you rock and vodka and everything thank you rick thank you billy thank you all for we're gonna say one two three about ready one two three thank you very much okay thank you very much everybody thank you so much hold your boards up thank you thank you so much I don't know where my photographers are, so if you guys can send me these pictures, I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. All those people are performing. 